and the dark. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to our uh, Bible study that happens after we do our prayer time on Wednesday night. This is the last Wednesday night of 2022. And before I do anything, I just want to thank um, Sister Veronica for your faithfulness for this year. Uh, just week in and week out, month in and month out, I remember you being sick. I remember the kids running all around you. And uh, we just, as a as a family, just want to thank you for how you have uh, charted the course in, in, in sweet hour prayer and doing our prayer requests and our praise reports. And so just want to take a moment to say thank you to you. And this is Southeast Seventh-day Adventist Church in Cleveland, Ohio. You can find us at SE, the number seven, the word day, dot O-R-G. And uh, we're going to pray and get started with what we're doing tonight, the power of prayer. Lord, thank you for uh, our time together tonight, what we've already experienced and communing as a family. Uh, Deacon Allen gave us a powerful uh, devotional this evening, and then everyone else came in and we shared uh, burdens and shared requests. And we ask, Lord, that you grant each one of those, that you continue to bless us uh, as you see fit, because we understand that you are our Father, and we are your children, and we trust you. So, Lord, we thank you for uh, even this time now where we're going to talk about prayer. We ask, Lord, that you bless the conversation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I hope everybody can hear me okay. I Guess what? I don't plan on keeping you very long tonight. How about that? Uh, we just plan on being together just for a little while. And then we're going to be done. Okay. Uh, so if I can get, I just want to have tag team tonight. And uh, uh, Elder Stone, do you mind reading for me tonight? No, no, I can read. I, I can see the screen well. All right. Thank you so much. Day, day eight, the power of prayer. In this harvest season, we will be talking to our friends about God. But before we talk to them about God, we need to talk to God about them. Nothing of any real consequence is going to happen in our harvest if we don't make prayer a priority. All right. You agree with that, Elder Stone? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, indeed. So when we start talking about preparing for the harvest, we have targeted Mother's Day that particular week. Uh, we just want to set the miles out area on fire. We've targeted that. Uh, so we're getting ready now. And one of the first things that people say is, we've been down that street. We've tried this and we've tried that. We did this and we did that. And uh, we're going to find out this evening what God has to say about things that you have done before. But before we get there, uh, I just want to tell all of you, even though even though, though we were recording this, I want to say it to everybody, no matter what the issue, I receive different problems every day. People didn't even take off for the holidays. Every day, somebody's telling me about a new problem, and I got to add those to my personal problems. However, I am not dismayed. I am not discouraged because I believe God. And, and that kind of belief is what I hope that you have. And if you don't have it, I pray that God gives it to you as we go forward. Uh, Elder Parker, you want to say something? Yes, sir. See, that's the, that's the uh, thing right there. We have to believe God. If we don't believe God, it can't, it cannot happen. If we do not believe God, it will not happen. God is the one who has given us uh, the will and the way to get things done through prayer. Jesus did everything. Everything he did, he did through prayer. He did with prayer. So that's what we have to remember. And that's why it talks about the power of prayer. Because the power of prayer is what gets it done. No matter what we say or what we do, 
when we pray, we have to believe what we are saying and asking God for, and that is going to happen. We have to pray in his will. And when we talk about evangelism, that's God's will. What was, his, what was Jesus' command to the disciples? Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. That's his command. So now when we pray for souls, we have to believe what we're asking for. And then know that we are in God's will because we are praying for souls. Amen. Amen. I can't, I can't even add anything to that. Thank you, Elder Parker. Okay, Elder Stone, unless you have something else to say about this, we're going to move forward. Amen. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes things people. Prayer changes you. And some of you will be praying for people who are facing situations that have defeated them for years. There are others that you have invited to come to, have invited to church time and time again, but they never seem interested. There may be family members who are not only uninterested in spiritual things, but downright hostile if you bring it up. These situations seem impossible, but prayer is God's instrument to combat the impossible. Wow, now that's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. Oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure oh, yeah. we can all identify with certain people. They don't want to hear nothing about it. It can get downright hostile about it. There are other people you've asked time and time again, and they just no interest. And then there's other folks who've been promising. Oh, yeah, we're going to one day. All that happens in the hood household as well. However, I got to say it one more time, Elder Stone. I believe God. Huh. The so very, he, fact, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The very okay. fact that um, I am here in the church, I'm a living testimony because I can recall a time when every time I heard any gospel music on, I would be like, would you turn that off? <laughs> Who's playing that? I, oh, I can't stand that music uh, because at work, they would have it coming over overhead on Sundays, had to go in and they would have some gospel on for a couple of hours. And I, I just could, it would just irk me to no end. Hmm. And so here I am now loving the praise and worship, loving God. And so I said, look, God is awesome. He, I, <laughs> I don't know the day or the exact time uh, that I came in to him or he came into me, but I'm thankful. I'm thankful that his blood has never lost his power. Just one day, you finally have the blinders taken off your eyes. And you're like, how foolish. You know, if anybody's, he said, whosoever can go to heaven and be with me for eternity with no more sin, no more sickness, no more death, no more tears. I, I want to get in that line. <laughs> whosoever means me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you. Uh, Elder Billy, come on in. Hey, how y'all doing? Good, good. I, I shot a text. I got two sisters left in my whole family. Mm -hmm. And uh, I shot them a text this morning. I student texts everybody, you know, and give you a group and so. But this is, I'm going to read you the text I sent early this morning. I generally get a response. But I said, good morning. Let us start this year off drawing closer to God through Bible study. Just say yes to God and know to Satan, okay? So we will be together with mom with mama in heaven. And that's mm. a cool thing. Okay. I haven't heard from him since. But this <laughs> is, you know, but this is my second request for, for you know, asking them would they like to have Bible study. It's, yeah, yeah, so we never got a date. You know, you'll get that. They'll say yes, but you'll never get a date when you're going to have it. So now I said, okay, the key thing is I used to do this with my enemies. Uh, I would talk to them about God. They would flee. 
point. I'm one of my sisters to get started doing something. And uh, they'll flee from me like I'm safe. <laughs> That's all. Right, right. Good point. Good point. Thank you. Sister Veronica. Yes, Pastor. I just want to say the power of prayer. Oh, there's so much power in prayer because prayer can go, Pastor, where we cannot go. We mm. can stay here and pray for somebody all over the world and know that, you know, God will honor our prayer. You know, we don't have to physically be there, but that's the power of prayer. Oh, it travels, Pastor. It's just like when Jesus, when the man came to Jesus and said, hey, pray for my son. You don't have to go there. Just say the word and it will happen. And those are the prayers that we have to sometimes get out of our comfort zone and pray, you know, because, yes, there is power in prayer. And I said it over and over again. When we pray, we have to believe in the impossible because we serve a God of the impossibilities. There's no prayer that we can say, oh, it's not going to happen. Oh, that is too hard for God. But no, we have to bring our request to him. No matter how small, no matter how big, no matter how impossible we may you know, think it is. Because God will answer according to his will and his riches in glory. We just have to ask. We can make, we can just say, oh, God, uh, make up God mind for us. You know, we just have to ask and put it in it. But there's prayer. Um, there's power in prayer because I live by that. There's so many ridiculous things happen in my life that I pray and put before God. So I know, I know the power of prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Parker. We have to realize the last sentence on this slide. These situations seem impossible, but prayer is God's instrument to combat the impossible. And if we think about what we read on the previous slide, all those things have occurred to all of us at one time, or one of them or more have occurred to all of us at one time. And it makes it seem impossible. But the thing we have to do and remember is prayer changes things. Prayer changes people. And the most important thing is prayer changes you. Yes. We have to remember, first of all, we have to get right with God. Mm -hmm. We have to pray for God to get us in the mind to pray for others. Intercessory prayer is not something that anybody can just jump into. You have to be right to intercede for others. Amen. The impossible will occur when we begin to pray and pray sincerely, not just one of those, now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. No, 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 no. You mm -hmm. have to be sincere in prayer. You have to be ready to combat in prayer because the devil does not want you to pray. Mm -hmm. He would rather see you do anything else but pray because prayer is what gets you empowered. Our theme, engage, equip, and empower. Mm -hmm. Satan doesn't like that. He does not like that at all because first of all, in order to engage, you have to be able to pray. And we will see the impossible. I believe that in all my heart because God said it. He said, greater things shall you do. Now look what God did. Look what Jesus did. He said, greater things shall you do. We will see miracles performed when we get down to prayer and be praying sincerely and praying without ceasing. That's what God is calling for us to do. And we will see the impossible. Amen. Powerful. Well, saints, Satan is a mess starter. All he does is keep up mess. That's what Satan does. <laughs> and he's not the only mess starter. He's just the main one. And what do mess starters hate to happen? They never want the parties to come together. 
<laughs> Isn't that true about mess starters? They never want the two parties to come together because then they find out who the real enemy is. And God is saying, come to me. Let's talk about it. I didn't plan to keep you long. So let's 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 go down this list, Elder Stone. Prayer opened the Red Sea for Moses. Prayer made the sun stand still for Joshua. Prayer raised Lazarus from the dead. Prayer freed Paul and Silas from prison. Oh, yes. When we pray, we line up with the purposes of God, and he releases his supernatural power. Prayer is such a priority to God that there are certain things he could do for us, but won't because we aren't asking him wow yeah 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 so that to me that's the very the whole point of prayer mm. is to align ourselves with god to be in to me it's like being in the blessing line mm. you you can't stand on the street corner down the way mm -hmm. want the blessing when the blessings are up this way, in this in, in this line, but you're way somewhere else. No, no, you got to get in the right line to get the blessing. Mm. Mm. It's like he uh, when the commandments were spoken or reread. I think it was in Deuteronomy on the mount. Mm. This is the cursing from one mountain. They shouted all the blessings. And That's from the right. other mountain, they shouted all the curses. That's right. Choose, choose which one you you want a, a, a life and blessing or death and evil. You choose. Hmm. Make up your mind. You want to get over there with the cursing uh, mountain, then go on over that way if that's what you want. Hmm. God is so gracious, and wow. He's like you said. Come, let us reason together. Mm -hmm. come, come to me. I'm, I want to help you. And mm -hmm. he's not a, a, a trickster. He's not a trickster that, you know, holds out a lollipop and when you walk toward him, snatches your arm and does something awful to you. No, no, that's not who God is. Amen. Elder Parker. I hate to keep talking, but this is too good. <laughs> that's all right <laughs> this is too good when we pray we line up with the purposes of god and he releases his supernatural power we have the prayer helps us to get in alignment with god we think that we are in alignment with god because we attend church we pay our tithes we give offering we sing praises we worship but how many of us really really sincerely take time to pray sincerely and pray in the will of God. We have to ask ourselves that question. What are we praying for? When we pray, are we at, are we praying for things? We praying for a bigger house. We praying for a better car. We praying for a bigger bank account. We praying that the, our grass will grow so it looks nice. We praying for all these natural things but what about the things of the lord hmm. what about what about the things he has a desire to come to pass in our lives what about praying that we get in alignment with god what about praying that our mind would be off these worldly things and on the things of god what hmm. about praying for the church and the, the vision of the church how about praying for the pastor and the first lady how about praying for the needs of others how about praying for the sick in the shut-in? How about praying for those things? Those are lining us for the purposes of God. Then that's when the supernatural power is released. I'm going to say this and shut up. When Peter was in prison, what got Peter out of jail? Hmm. The saints went into prayer. Hmm. And God moved miraculously, supernaturally, right? Hmm. He sent an angel into the prison. Pe the prayer was so powerful, Peter was laying down there in that dungeon asleep. 
The angel had to wake him up, told him now put on your uh, sandals and the chains fell off of him. Hmm. And they walked out of that prison that was locked shut and walked by all the guards. And hmm. Peter thought he was asleep until he got outside of the prison. And that's when the Lord allowed him to open his eyes and he saw he was free. Hmm. And he went to the saints and they were still in prayer. That's right. See, that, that's supernatural power. That's, that's what God can do when we pray. We have get out, got to get out of the mindset that it's not possible. Mm -hmm. We have to get into the mindset with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. And then prayer is such a priority to God that there is, are certain things he could do for us, but we, he won't because we aren't asking him. Mm -hmm. Let's start asking God for the things that he wants us to achieve and not for the things we want to achieve. Hmm. Hmm. Amen. Wow, I was waiting on you to get to the part where the room shook, but we gonna move on. Sister Gladys, go right ahead. <laughs> yeah, I love what Brother Elder Art just said, and I love the part where he said Peter was asleep. Hmm. And that's important. Most of us, when we have issues, when we have problems, we can't sleep. We worry ourselves to death. We might say, oh, Lord, please help me. But we don't believe it. Peter believed it. It was a test of his faith that even though he was in prison, he went to sleep. And that's what I like about what I got posted on my um, uh, thing. I says, when we pray, when we pray, God listens. And when you listen, God talks. And when you believe, God works. And that's yeah. power in prayer. Excellent. Excellent. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. I thought you was going to say more, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's go on here. Uh, since Elder Stone. James chapter four, verse two says, ye have not because ye ask not the King James version. So as you begin to develop your mission map, it's important to remember that the most powerful thing we can do for each person on that is pray for them every day. Mm. Matthew 7, 7 is a great prayer passage. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Oh, the or, what man, <laughs> uh -huh. or what man of you, what man is, is there among you who when his <laughs> son asks for a loaf will give him a stone? It must have been distracted right there. You did good, Elston. <laughs> <laughs> or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake. He will give him a snake. Oh, sorry. Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? Mm -hmm. New American Standard Bible. All right. What a promise. God is challenging us, imploring us, commanding us to ask him for what we want. There are two important things we need to know about those words that Jesus spoke in his Sermon on the Mount. First, of all those words, first, of all those words are imperatives. God is not asking us to pray. He is telling us to pray. Wow. Another mouthful. Dr. Wilson is knocking it out the park tonight, isn't he? 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, I just want to let that marinate before we move on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's not asking us to pray. He is telling us to pray. Elder Parker. Elder Parker, go ahead. This is Sister Parker. Hey. I was listening to everybody, and I was thinking, like, I keep asking God to save my children. And you know what? By faith, I got to hold on to that and to believe. I don't see it and believe that, that one day he is going to bring my kids, praise God, into salvation. So that's you. That's guess that's a major faith walk there, because you're looking at their lives, what they're doing, you know. But yet you keep going to God, asking Him to save them, and you keep pushing your petitions to the Lord. It's you know that wasn't Jesus' repetition when He was down here and uh, He spoke to the people. He pushed what the kingdom of God. Yes. And he kept on doing it, and that's how we have to be with our prayers. We don't see it. Sometimes the enemy might even try to uh, discourage or have us not to pray because we feel we pray too much about it. But too much is never enough to pray for what you want God to do for you. Amen. Uh, Elder Parker, were you adding to that? Uh, yes, I was thinking about this paragraph right here where the promise God is challenging us, imploring us, commanding us to ask him for what we want. Yes, Lord. We have to con- we have to understand that the things that he is talking about there is not just the things that we want in our life, but the things that he has implanted in us that we are supposed to pray for people. See, when we look at things, when we look at script, we we'll look look at sentences like that and look at scripture, ask, knock, and uh, asking you shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking shall be opened unto you we began to think about natural things. Mm -hmm. But see, but the Bible tells us, set your affection on things above and not on things on this earth. We have to ask God, first of all, Lord, what do you have planned for me? What Mm -hmm. is it you want me to do? Why am I going to go here? And what should I do when I get there? That's Mm -hmm. what we need to do. We need to see God in every facet of our life because a lot of things that we are doing and and asking in prayer, God is not answering. Why? Because it is not in his will. Mm -hmm. We have to remember it's all about God's will when we pray. Mm. When we pray, it's all about God's will. First of all, those words are imperative. God is not asking us to pray he is telling us to pray Mm -hmm. and how many of us are are actually doing what god has told us to do commanded us to do and the word imperative is very very important Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's 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 like i was saying earlier satan is a mess starter and what do mess starters not want to happen for the two parties to come together. Because when the two parties come together, you find out who the real enemy is. Satan doesn't want us to go to God because he know when we go to God, it's game over. (laughs) You know, now he's being exposed, he's being found out, uh, and mainly for how little power he actually has. I like that about uh, Deacon Allen's uh, uh, devotional tonight doing Sweet Hour of Prayer we don't have to be afraid of the enemy. We we all we have to do is be acquainted with and be in line with the power of Jesus of, of Jesus and the Father. Sister Gladys, go right ahead. Yeah, I want to tell you that I was having some technical issues, but um we're commanded, I believe we're commanded to pray. The yeah. Bible says this word says pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean we have to walk through this life through the store with our heads held down, but just have a prayer on your lips. Lord Jesus, thank you. You know, when you go into the store, before you go in the store, pray over your list, pray over what you're going to buy. Let the most high focus your mind and keep your mind focused on what you need to get. Don't be tricked by these subliminal messages that can cause you to do and purchase things on impulse. Look at what Samuel did. The people were about to, they they hated Samuel. They Mm -hmm. hated him, but Samuel said, Though you hate me, 
it would be a sin for me not to pray for you. Mm. And so we're, you know, and, and then what does he say in Chronicles? He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he says, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal, hallelujah, their land. And I want my land to be healed. So I want to have a praying spirit. I want to live a praying life. That's all I have to say. Amen. Amen. Well, I like what y'all had to say. And uh, these next couple slides is confirmation for you. Uh, all right, Elder Stone. Prayer is too important to be optional. Our friends are too precious to God. And our needs are so important to God that he's requiring that we pray for them. But not only are those words imperatives, in the Greek language of the New Testament, these words, ask, seek, and knock, are present imperatives with continuous actions. That's a fancy way to say, don't stop. Keep on asking, keep on knocking, even if it looks like nothing is happening or the situation seems impossible. The promise of this passage is that everyone who prays will receive an answer. Mm. Remember this today, day eight. D.L. Moody. Some people think that God doesn't like to be troubled with our constant asking, but the way to trouble God is not to come at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've heard people say, Elder Stone, uh, God heard me the first time. I don't have to keep saying it. Ah, well, <laughs> these last couple of slides begs to differ, right? Yes, and sometimes it, it seems that he's wanting us to uh, be more uh, consistent and sincere and laser focused. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's sometimes you have to stay on that. Just mm -hmm. want to see how badly do you really want an answer? Do you really want this from me? Or is it just like sometimes uh, if, if you have something and children, they see somebody else get something, they'll just come up and ask, oh, I want that too. Give me some, give me some. They don't really want it. <laughs> it's just that somebody else got it. So they're going to ask for it as well. Yeah. And as you watch them, they just drop it or, or leave it sitting somewhere and run off and play with something else. Mm -hmm. And and I think about that, that we as adults, that's how we do God sometimes. Mm -hmm. Somebody else got a blessing and mm -hmm. it looks good. I want and, a new car too. <laughs> yeah, I want that new toy for my life. Or I want to be able to brag and say, oh, my child came to, came to church with me. And um, so I'm going to keep harping on my kid, uh, keep praying, Lord, send them to church with me, send them to church with me. So I can brag and say, oh, my whole family is here today you know <laughs> whatever mm -hmm. so it's not that you sincerely want it you just want it because somebody else got it mm -hmm. so he wants you to show show him how much you really really want it well what comes to my mind uh when we talk about ask seek and knock is i think about uh elijah uh, praying for rain, you know, he, he, mm -hmm. he knew that was God's will, yet he had to pull it down out of the atmosphere. See, to me, that's a real prayer warrior or, or Daniel, um, uh, praying for 21 days, you know, mm -hmm. similar situation. He knows this is God's will. And yet he doesn't stop because nothing has changed. He hadn't seen anything. He hadn't heard anything. He continues to combat or war in the spirit. Like that situation with Elijah, no matter what his servant said, no matter what his assistant said, he kept saying, go back and look again. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that image is just uh, such a powerful image in my mind and i'm sure you know you guys can think of others but that's the one that always comes to me immediately is elijah is sent and yet the rain hadn't come and so he just he stays in that mode of i'm not leaving until i pull rain out the sky and i want that kind of faith <laughs> mm -hmm. El El elder parker did that stir something up in you? <laughs> yes, it did. And I, I'm going <laughs> to bring, bring it down till today. Mm -hmm. When uh, Parabellum started, the series on Parabellum, the revival in Parabellum, the Lord laid on my heart to uh, go and be praying for 21 days. It was our prayer leader in uh, Elder Hood. Prayed, prayed during the time of the revival, the Parabellum revival, to pray over you and pray for the messages, pray for the church. And after that 21 days was over, the Lord said, do not stop. Mm. And morning manna and bombarding heaven has been going on ever since then, nonstop. No matter who is sick, no matter who doesn't feel good, it continues to go because God said, do it. Amen. I said to continue to pray for the past, continue to pray for the messages every morning, continue to pray for the church. And now he has added, pray for the revival. And see, we we may not see anything coming up from it that 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 people might say, well, it should be a, a, a whole the church should be full, blah, 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 blah. But that's not the point. The point is God said continue to do it. And when God said continue to do it, the benefits of it are going to be seen and it's going to be above and beyond what any of us can ask or think. Hmm. See, people said, uh, uh, well, 10 souls got saved. Okay, but how many more souls out there that God want in the church? Yeah. We can't, we can't stop praying. There's a song, saints, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. We cannot stop praying. We have to continue to do it irregardless of how we feel, what we see, or what we don't see. We have to continue. And the more people get on board, the quicker it would happen because God would be moved by what is going on. God loves unity. Mm -hmm. God loves togetherness. God loves a church that is together because a family that prays together stays together. We have to continually pray and seek God's face for all of these things, not just once, not just twice, but every day we have to be in the face of God, petitioning him, pleading yeah. with him. Not that he needs it, but that's what he wants us to do. He wants to see how sincere we are, how faithful we are, and how much we really want it. Just like when your child asks you for something, you tell them, okay, I'll get it for you, but here's what you got to do. Hmm. And then they go, they, they go, they go do it once or twice. No, 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 no. That's your job until I tell you to stop. Hmm. But dad, I'm tired. Mom, I'm tired. Well, okay. Well, you don't want it then. Yes, I do. Well, you got to go out there and do it. Take the garbage out every day. Don't, don't, don't let me have to tell you to take it out. You know, that's your job. You take it out. If you take that garbage out for 30 days straight, I'll give it to you. Doesn't that sound like what would we do to our child? Mm -hmm. But now God tell us to pray 30 days straight. We think it's a burden. Mm -hmm. But God said, do it. God said to do it. Keep on knocking. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. That's what we have to do. Amen. Amen. Sister Gladys. Okay, yeah. Um, I was on that, I started that journey of 21 days of praying for you, praying for you in the revival. And it became addictive. You know, mm -hmm. when, when, when you pray, when they, they say to either break a habit or add a habit, continue doing it for 21 days. And we did that for 21 days and I didn't want it to stop. And it didn't stop. And then, you know, they have you pray out loud if you want to. Well, I didn't feel comfortable doing that because I couldn't pray like 
elder, but like pastorhood. I couldn't pray like sisterhood. I couldn't pray like Mother Parker and, and Elder Art Parker. I couldn't pray like them. I wanted to pray like them, so I kept my mouth shut. I didn't want to sound strange praying, you know. But the Most High told me, he said, Gladys, be yourself, because everybody else is already taken. I created you. You pray the way you feel like praying. There's no right or wrong to prayer to me, because praying, praying is just talking to me, telling me what you want. Prayer doesn't change me, Gladys. Prayer changes you. It brings you closer to me. It brings me, it makes you the apple of my eye. That's why he said David was the apple of his eye. And you know, David did some raunchy stuff, but he was the apple of God's eye. Why? Because David knew how to get God's attention by praying and by fasting. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, wow. So we've read Moody here. And uh, so this is where we are now. Elderstone. Identify a personal prayer request that has not been answered. Pray again and ask for a clear answer while promising that you will accept it. Wow. So that uh, sounds like a, a challenge. It you is. know, identify a personal prayer request that has not been answered. Pray again and ask for a clear answer while promising that you will accept it. Whatever God says on the issue, like he told Paul, my grace is sufficient. Don't ask me anymore. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. I think that, okay, here we go. Where are some of the things you could do to make life better for the people around you? What are some of the things you could do to make yeah. life better for the people around you? That's right, God, write correct. Write this today. <laughs> so I want you to, to write down some things that you could do to make life better for the people around you. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, just just further confirmation. I need to take this computer <laughs> and get it checked out. It's, uh, it's difficult to do it without a cursor. I don't have my PowerPoint either. I'm just glad to be able to get it up without the without the PowerPoint. So um, hold on, let me see here. Oh, here we go. All right. So that is it for tonight. I hope that you have enjoyed uh, our um uh, our time together after prayer meeting to talk about 40 days to the harvest. That's this book right here. And we were on day eight, the power of prayer. And I know that most of you on here have the book. Uh, it's really, it's like six bucks and seven, if you, you know, with the shipping or whatever, really, really uh, affordable. Uh, is certainly worth having. I think Dr. Wilson did an excellent job putting this together. And this book is supposed to start 40 days uh, before uh, your evangelistic effort. Uh, however, because we're doing this once a week, you know, we had to start a little early and some nights we'll double up and maybe even triple up on the thought. But right now he's knocking it out the park, talking about prayer, I hope that you have enjoyed it. I'm looking around. I don't see any other hands. Uh, Sister Parker, you want to make your announcement tonight? Yes, reminding everybody. We talked very well tonight about prayer. So let us come together in the morning <laughs> to bombard heaven. Praise God, because God has given us that opportunity. When we come and pray for our pastor, when we come and pray for our first lady and their extended family, Praying for Parabellum, praying for uh, Sleeping Dragons, praise God, and praying for ourselves uh, as we ask God to move on our life. So, Saints, let's come and get up in the morning. Set your clocks tonight for 7 o'clock so that we can come once again to the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. Remember also that communion is this Sabbath. So if you're not going to be on site with us, the weather's going to be a lot warmer. 
Uh, it may rain a little bit, but we'll certainly certainly won't be what it was last week. So we will be in church. Everything is surrounding communion this Sabbath and closing out the new year. Yes, there'll be a message, but that too will still be about communion. Uh, then we'll have a little fellowship uh, after church. Uh, uh, the service will be from noon to one. Then uh, we'll have fellowship downstairs for a little while. Uh, so please plan accordingly. And we, because we were not coming back later on that night as we normally do uh, to bring in the new year, we want you to be home and be safe. So we're going to do it all that morning. And I believe that the Lord is truly going to bless us. Uh, also, on Friday night, Sabbath school is a special treat for you as well. Uh, Friday night, we're going to have a panel doing Sabbath school. Uh, myself, Sister Elder Hood, uh, Elder Parker, and uh, of course, Elder Brooks, we will be talking about the lesson as a panel, and we look forward to having a good time doing that because you know at some point we're going to clash, and that that's when it gets good. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, so we just pray that you have a wonderful uh, rest of the week, Lord willing. All right. Uh, I'm looking around. Uh, oh, also, uh, again, we didn't get to do the toys last Sabbath because of the weather, but we have identified the young kids in need, and we're just going to transport them directly to them. And we thank you for those who uh, that had it to, to give to that effort. Uh, to give to little kids in need. We certainly appreciate you. And even if you couldn't and you wanted to, uh, we're grateful for that as well. All right. I think that's going to be it for tonight. I'm looking around. If there Are there any other announcements? I'm looking at my uh, elders, my uh, uh, leaders of different ministries. No other announcements. We're going to get out of here before nine o'clock. Oh, happy day. What a miracle it is. Amen. <laughs> All right. Hope y'all enjoyed that tonight. I am really enjoying this book. So if you don't have it, please get it. If you don't know how to get it, just hit me up and I will tell you exactly how to do that. All right. Uh, Elder Stone, uh, can you uh, close us out in prayer tonight? Yes. Thank you, Lord, for all that our ears have heard and all that our eyes have seen and how you've stirred in our hearts and reminded us once again of your command to pray, to seek your face, to ask you, for you know the end of a thing from its very beginning. Lord, we thank you that we have privilege and right to come directly to your throne. We ask, Lord God, that each and every person under the sound of my voice and their families, Lord God, be safe and saved into your kingdom. May they see the new year and see the things that you will do gloriously in their lives and for their family members and neighbors and loved ones. We're praying and asking that you be with the family of uh, Elder Levon uh, of Emmanuel Temple. He's in hospice now. So, Lord God, please be with the family. She was a wonderful women's ministry leader, beautiful vocalist. Lord God, just remember all of your saints. Glenn family as well. And just all of your saints that need that special comfort at this time. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done, all that you will do all that you are doing right now in us and through us. Give us a good night's rest and bring us again together on Friday night or either in the morning, bombarding heaven. These things we ask in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Great job, everybody. Hope to see you soon.